St. Luke 15, verses 21 through 22, it says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and put a and, uh, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. You see, the father, he does the same thing for us. Even when we don't feel that we're worthy, even when we've done the worst things, when we come before Him and we repent, and we show that we love Him, and we come to Him with a humble and an open heart, He gives us the best. And He dresses us the way that we need to be dressed in order to be dressed for battle. Today I'm going to be talking about being dressed for battle. Last, last couple of weeks we've been talking about prayer. Today I'm going to be talking about the importance to be properly dressed for the battle. And when I say battle, I'm not talking about a physical battle, but I'm talking about a spiritual battle. Every day that we live and we breathe, and we are, if we call ourselves Christians, we, we go through this life, and there are struggles, and there's, there are temptations, and there are trials, and there's tribulations. And there is a, the Bible says, the, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're spiritual and to the mighty, to the pulling down of the strongholds. And it is vitally important to understand that in order for us to be able to defeat the enemy and to defeat our carnal mind and to defeat our fleshly nature, we must be dressed for the battle, properly dressed for the battle. And we're going to be talking about that today. But before we can go any further, we must start the podcast out properly. Everybody take off your hats. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your spirit. And God, our prayer right now, God, I don't want to take another step. I don't want to say another word without being led and guided by your Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, have your way in this podcast today. For Lord, I am nothing, but you are everything. And God, I pray that whatever I speak today, that it will be for the heart of your people and what you would have for your people, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now is the time to jump in. Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you. Hello, you're listening to The Adventures in the Great Commission. My name is Ryan Colley. I am the International Evangelist of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. And we thank you so much for tuning in today, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on all the different uh podcast platforms. We appreciate you very much. And um, today we're going to be talking about being dressed for battle and the importance to be dressed properly for battle. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, we talked about prayer the last couple of weeks and uh, the importance of prayer and the importance of having that weapon in your life and the different types of prayer. And uh, today we're going to be talking about being dressed for battle. And so, um, I'm going to read, read to you kind of what God had showed me a little bit about this. Um, God is raising up His people to become battle ready in this last day. You Believe it or not, we are in the last day. Now, the last day can be 100 years. Who knows how long that, the, that is. But the way that this crazy world is going and the way that we, the, the, the situations that we find ourselves in, I definitely believe that we're kind of in the last days. And so it is important for us to be dressed for the battle. Not, 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 not necessarily a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. And um, in order for us to be battle ready, we must be properly dressed for the battle. The world today provides a lot of noise, but God has called for us to not listen to the noise of the camp, but, in, in, but, but for us to make a tabernacle walk. You know, we, we talked about the Tabernacle Walk. We've talked about it in a couple different podcasts. Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover has a message that he preached recently when we were in Chicago and also um, uh, here at Revival for Christ Club, how we need to make that Tabernacle Walk, how we need to make a walk that is committed and dedicated. You know, it's easy to listen to the noise of the camp. It's, listen, it's easy to listen to the opinions and the thoughts of what the world tells you what you should be and how the world tells you that you need to be 
and how you need to be a man or how you need to be a woman and what how you fit into your family and how you fit into your jobs. But what really matters is having a, a sold out, dedicated, committed walk with God and having that tabernacle walk g- veering away from what the world tells you, veering away from what the, the world stereotypes and, and gearing into what God has for your life and, and being committed and dedicated. You know, a lot of people don't like that term. People don't like that committed and dedicated term because um, it means you have to sacrifice. It means you have to give up something that maybe may, maybe have to give up comfort. And But in order to be everything that God has called you to be, you have to be committed. You have to be dedicated. You have to give up parts of your flesh, parts of who you are. Um, and, and, and why do we have to do that? Because our Savior did it. Our Savior gave up, sacrificed His life. So if our Savior, how are we better than our Savior who gave up His own life so that we could have life everlasting? Don't you think He's going to require that of us too? And when I say give up, I'm talking about spiritually, I'm talking about phys- you know, giving up your flesh, giving up your carnal nature, giving up your opinions. I'm not necessarily talking about physically dying every day. I'm talking about dying of your ways. And that's not easy because our flesh wants what it wants. And our fleshly nature wants to do what it wants to do. But in order for us to stand up and to be the men and to be the woman that God has called for us in this last day and to be dressed for battle and to be battle ready when the battle comes, we have to make that tabernacle walk. We have to be committed. We have to sacrifice. It is essential for our life. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to live a perfect life to be able to do that. We're going to make mistakes. We're human. People make mistakes. And so the scripture that I've that God has given me for Dress for Battle, you know, uh, in the month of October at Revival for Christ, we, uh, all the men ministers and the, all the men ministers in training, got up and spoke. And our theme was Dress for Battle. And... Uh, it was funny because, you know, a lot of people use the scripture in Ephesians where it talks about the different types of um, uh, weapons and the different things that you need to put on, the armor of God. Um, and most people use that. Um, I did not. God's, God brought me to St. Luke chapter 15. And it's uh, not necessarily uh, your atypical story of uh, what, what it means to be dressed for battle, but... I think in the end you'll you'll see where I'm going. So, um, if you'll turn with me to St. Luke chapter 15, St. Luke chapter 15 and verse 11, and uh, we're going to be talking about the prodigal son. And yes, the prodigal son uh, became dressed for battle. St. Luke chapter 15 verse 11, and it says, "And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me." And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. How many times can we relate with that son? You know, we... We take everything and we, you know, we, we don't really think about repercussions of things. We don't think about uh, <laughs> what's going on in our lives and we just, uh, we forget. We forget the calling that God has for our life and we can become like the prodigal son. We, we get caught up in the noise of the camp. We get caught up the noise of, of distraction, of, of what the, the world says, of what we're supposed to be, a man or a woman. You know, I, I know that I might be speaking to some of you out there. Maybe you're someone that says, Brother Ryan, I, I know I've got a calling in my life. I know I have a calling in my life, but I haven't always followed it. You know, and, and, and have you ever found yourself where you thought all the things that you were striving for you thought you were doing the right thing, 
but you didn't pray, but you didn't really seek, or you didn't really strive for the things that you knew that you needed to strive for, and that's your calling. You strive for what, what the world, and that's kind of what, what this son did. He said he wasted his substance. See, God has, what God gives us is very precious, and what God, His Word and His Spirit that He gives us is very precious. And sometimes He gives us that, but we become like spoiled children, and we, we're thankful for it for a time, but we think, okay, I, I've got, I know what I need to do. I know what I need. I, God knows my heart, and I'm going to go out, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and, and I'm going to be okay. But then we get to a place where we become lack, lacking. We're, we're, we're lacking or, or we become in want like this son was. And, I, and I'm sure that son didn't do all those things so that he could lack. I'm sure that he didn't go out and try to waste all the substance of, his, of what God had given him so that he could one day run out. So sometimes why I'm saying this is that there may be some of you that are listening that know that maybe I've, I don't even know how I got to this place. I don't know how I even got to this place in my life where I've totally forgotten about the call that, that He has for my life. And see, God wants you to know that it's not too late because we're in the last day. And God is calling. He's trying to call back all His men and women that are called to become dressed for battle. But see, if you stay out there and if you just continue to stay in the lack, you continue to stay out there and, 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 and you don't come to God and say, God, here I am, then you can't be dressed for battle. But this is what He said. And He went and joined Himself to a citizen of that country, and He sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And He would fain have filled His belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto Him. And when He came to Himself, He said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger. So he gave, have you ever got to the place where you're like, Man, I know this is not where God has me. I know that this is not what God has called for my life. All these things that I've strove for, all these things that I've, that I've longed for, they're not filling. See, that's what the prodigal son had come to the place, that he had taken everything that God had given him, or they had taken everything that his father had given him, and he used them for the wrong thing, and he wasted those things. And he came to a place where he said, man, this is just not feeling anymore. This is not filling my heart. There may be some of you out there right now that are listening to this podcast that say, Brother Ryan, I know I've got a call in my life. I know that there's something different. I know that what I'm doing in the, in the, in, in the rut that I've, that I've found myself in, this is not where I'm called to be. And you need to follow what happened right after this. I will arise and go to my Father and will say unto Him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before Thee, and am no more worthy to be called Thy Son. Make me as one of Thy hired servants. See, He came to the place where He said, I, I've got to look at myself in the mirror. And this is not what I want for my life. This is not what is God has called for my life. God, I know this is not what you have for me. And I've got to come to my Father, and I've got to be open face And say, God, I know that I'm not what I've done and the, my actions and what I've strove for, and, and I've, I've gotten off the tabernacle walk, and I've listened to the noise of the camp, and I've listened to what, what, the, what society has told me of I should to be, and I've, str I've strove for riches in this, on this earth, and I've strove for all these different things, for fame and for wealth, and they haven't fulfilled me, and they haven't fulfilled my heart. See, so you've got to come to God before Him and you've got to come to Him open face. And you've got to come to Him and you've got to examine yourself and say, God, here I am. 
Take this. God, I, I need to be the son that you've called me to be. And even if I come back to you, and even if you, you, all, you, all, all you ever want me to be is a servant, and even if you don't call me son anymore, that's okay. I just want to be with you. I just need to be with you. you got to come to Him before Him and say that. And He arose and came to His Father. But when He was yet a great way off, His Father saw Him and had compassion. And not only did His Father see Him and had com compassion, and He ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You see, his father saw him and he had great compassion. See, when we come before him, when we've been distracted with the, the noise of the camp, when we've been distracted from the noise and the distractions of this life that this life brings, when we come to God open face, when we come to God self-examining, when we come to God and say, God, here I am. God, I just want to be a servant in your kingdom. God, I don't, I don't, whatever it is I need to change, when we come before Him like that, our God loves us. Our God has compassion for us. You see, I don't even, I, I didn't even see me doing this podcast in this form, but I know that there is somebody that's watching right now that is listening and is saying, hey, Brother Ryan, this is me. And I want to encourage you today, right now, stop what you're doing. Stop trying to fulfill what society tells you that you need. Stop try doing what the world is saying. What the world, what this life tells you is important. You have a calling on your life. You have a calling on your life. And if you come before Him, and you say, God, here I am, God's going to run to you. God is going to wrap His arms around you. He is going to kiss your neck just like this father did to the prodigal son. He's going to kiss your neck. He's going to wrap His arms around you, and you're going to feel His love. Because you know what His love feels like. And you know that you're called for the kingdom of God. You're called for greater. And there may be more than one that are listening to this podcast. There may be more than one that are watching this podcast right now. I want you to be encouraged. It's not too late. We're in the last days and now is the time to rise up and to be the man and be the woman that God has called you to be. You know, he didn't have this story in the Bible just for fun. Just for to be a cute story. Oh, yeah, praise God. But this story was meant to reach to you. To say, my brother, my sister, it's time to stop playing games. It's time to rise up. Be everything that God has called you to be. Quit wasting the substance that He's put in you. And it's not too late. It's not too late. Because if you come before Him open face, He's going to run to you. And not only is He going to run to you and kiss your neck and wrap His arms around you, you're going to think this. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight am no more, more worthy to be called thy son. But this is what God is going to say to you. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. See, God wants you to come to him open face.
See, this podcast today was meant for those that are felt led, felt called to the ministry. And maybe you're someone that says, brother, I'm not the prodigal son. And maybe you say, brother, I am the prodigal son. I am the one that's been... But you know what? We've all messed up and we've all listened to the, the noise of the camp. Or when I say the camp, the world. We listen to the noise of the distraction. We listen to the noise of, of social media and TV and the media and, and all the different things. But God is wanting you to know that He wants to run to you. See, we've got to come to Him open face. And we've got to come to Him with self-examination. We've got to come to Him and say, God, here I am. I'm sick and tired of wasting the substance that you put in me. Because what He puts inside of you, when He sent His Son to die on the cross so that you could have life, that's precious. That love, that salvation is precious. When He filled you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is precious. That is what is needed. I'm going to read for you a little bit what God spoke to me about this. The prodigal son listened to the noise of the camp and all it did was bring emptiness and desolation. When you listen to distraction, when you listen to what the world says that you're what you're supposed to be, all it's going to bring is emptiness and desolation. We must come to the same realization that what the world has to offer will not fulfill us. It does not fulfill us. Money will not fulfill you. Fame will not fulfill you. Having cars and, and houses and, and all these things, they may give you temporary joy. But when you're at your deepest, darkest place, when you're feeling that nobody loves you. Your brand new Mercedes is not going to bring you joy. Your nice new home is not going to bring you joy. How much money you have in the bank or in stocks and bonds, it won't bring you joy. But what brings true satisfaction and peace and joy is your salvation and your walk with God. Knowing that He will wrap His loving arms around you even when you screwed up, even when you made mistakes. Going even further, what tr brings true satisfaction and true peace is to know that you're being used in your direct purpose for God in this life. You hear me talk a lot about this in this in this podcast. I talk about it a lot in life, a lot of times when I preach. I truly believe that. There is no better feeling than to know that you're being used in your calling for God. That's what brings true satisfaction. That is what brings true peace. The prodigal son had to be honest with himself not only honest, but he had to humble himself and come back to his father with the right heart and with the right attitude. So you've got to come to God open face and with not covering your sin, because God knows already, but coming to Him, saying, God, here I am. This is how I messed up. This is what I've done. I'm not proud of it. But God, take it. When we realize that the noise of the world and the camp has nothing to offer us, we must humbly and honestly come before God, and then He can dress us the way we need to be dressed. Dressed for battle. So we can make that tabernacle walk. And how do we get properly dressed for battle? Well, the father showed us in the, in, the, in the story of the prodigal son. First, by putting on the robe on our back. Secondly, by putting the ring on our finger. And third, by putting the shoes on our feet. Now, if you know anything about, or you've ever heard me preach, 
and it's something that I, a mantle that had kind of been passed down from our chief apostle, that God gives me, God gives me acronyms for a lot of things. And uh, first I want to talk about that robe. He wants to cover us with his best robe. When he covers you with his best robe, it's a righteous overcoming bride. He makes you a righteous overcoming bride of excellence. See, first off, when he puts that robe on you, he gives you that righteousness. What is righteousness? It is right standing in God. It's when you come to him open faced and you 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 take off the mask, you take off, you you knock down every wall, and you come to him and say, God, here I am. Fill me with your righteousness. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with your peace. I just want to be in right standing. I, I want your will for my life. When He gives you, when He puts that right standing, when He puts that righteousness in your life, do you then become an overcomer? What are you an overcomer of? You're an overcomer of your flesh. You're an overcomer of your fleshly nature. You're an overcomer of your carnal mind, the things that stop you. You're an overcomer of the noise of the world. You're an overcomer of the noise of the camp. And then what does it do? It makes you a bride of excellence. What, what are we called to be? We are called to be the bride of Christ. We are that bride. And see, God is wanting to refine us every single day. He wants to make us that bride of excellence. His Word covers our naked fleshly nature, which allows us to overcome sin and death through right standing and truth, making us a true bride of excellence. So He wants to put on His robe on you that righteous overcoming bride of excellence. A scripture to kind of go with that is Isaiah 61 and 10. Isaiah 61 and verse 10. Isaiah 61, 10 and 11, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for He hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with your jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown into spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. He wants to put that robe of righteousness on you. He wants to cover you. He wants to cover your fleshly nature with His Word so we can become in right standing. When we're in right standing, we're going to be over, we're going to be, can overcome our flesh, which makes us the bride of excellence in Him. Another scripture to back up that, I'm not going to go there, is Job 29, 14 through 17. Job 29, 14 through 17. The next item that he wants to put on you to be dressed for battle, he says to put a ring on his finger. Ring is spelled R-I-N-G. Righteousness igniting new growth. See, when he puts his Righteous, when he puts his ring on your finger, it's righteousness which ignites new growth. A ring represents what? A ring represents promise, right? And who is that promise in our life? What's the Bible say? The Bible says the promise is the Holy Ghost, right? He covers us with His Word, but also puts His Holy Ghost in our lives for remembrance, comfort, and to teach us all things. There will always be new growth when the Holy Ghost is utilized in our life. When, he, when we allow Him to put that ring, that promise in our life, the Holy Ghost. We talk about the Holy Ghost a lot on this podcast. Thanks so much for watching The Adventures of the Great Commission. Join us next week on our next episode of the podcast. Brothers, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching all that I have commanded you. And join me. Now is the time to jump in. Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you.